So right now is not the best time to be in the market. Now, if I look at my trading 212 portfolio, you can see that currently I am down by an unrealized 5.5%. And that is an unrealized loss of £2,487. And to make matters worse, I only have one holding, which is in the Vanguard FTSE All World. As you may know, this one fund basically tracks the entire global stock market or at least the most important ones. And you can see that over the past month, that is down by 5.71%, especially since the 1st of August, a massive event happened that caused this stock market crash. You can also see in my trading tool to invest account, things are not looking too better at all. I am down by an unrealized 4.84% and that is a loss of £852. If I scroll down, the biggest culprit here is again the Vanguard FTSE All World. Here I'm down by 6.1% and that is an unrealized loss of £990. In addition to that, I even have a small holding in the S&P 500 and even that in my portfolio is down by a massive 4 0.7%. So is the S&P 500 to blame for this massive downturn in the markets? Or is there something bigger going on? In this video, I'm going to look at the factors that caused this very unlikely stock market crash when all time highs were being made pretty much every week. The broker that I like to use is Trading212. And if you would like to sign up to Trading212 and receive a free share worth up to £100, then you can always use the link in the description down below. Alternatively, if you already have the app and signed up less than 10 days ago, you can head over to the promo code section by clicking this menu button down here with the three horizontal lines, scrolling all the way down and going into the use promo code section. And here you can enter the code J-U-B-A-I-R and you should receive a free share. So as you can see from my Google Finance watch list, every major index is down. The FTSE 250 is down by 2.63% this morning. The FTSE 100 is down by 1.96% just this morning. The VWRL is down by 1.9%. S&P 500 down by 1.84%. The German DAX is also down by 1.68%. So one of the reasons why the global stock markets are down is because they always usually follow the lead of the Americans. Now, when the US economy doesn't seem as strong, then the world's economy doesn't really seem as strong as the S&P 500 is used as a benchmark of stock markets all over the world. And obviously this is because the US economy is the biggest economy in the world and it trades with basically everyone, meaning any differences in the S&P 500 is gonna make a big difference all around the world. So one of the biggest reasons why the S&P 500 dropped was the fact that the jobs report was rather weak. Unemployment rose to 4.3%, as well as the number of jobs added per quarter seems to be decreasing quarter on quarter. Additionally, the Bank of England decided to cut rates from 5.25% to 5% this time, signaling the end of really high interest rates as a bid to restore the economy from very, very high interest rates, as inflation does seem to be more under control. However, things weren't the same in the United States of America as the Federal Reserve failed to cut interest rates. Now, when interest rates are high in the economy, the cost of borrowing increases. And basically what that means is that putting your money in a bank becomes more incentivized, becomes more rewarded. Therefore, if you think about it, more people would rather put money into a savings account than rather put it into the stock market, which like you saw the other day can go down 10% in a matter of one day. When interest rates are high, the stock market does not seem favorable as there are better options to put your money into. Therefore, if people are taking their money out of the stock market, the value of the overall stock market is also going to go down. As a kind of domino effect, all the other major indexes around the world, including the FTSE 100, take a tumble because if the US economy is not doing well, what hopes do they have? Japan's Nikkei 225 closed down over 12% in the negative, which was the worst single day since 1987. And that trading day was deemed Black Monday. All in all, if we look at the FTSE All World, we can see that stock markets over the world are doing incredibly bad, but there does seem to be maybe some hope lingering at the end with a small increase as you can see. All I can say is when you look at your portfolio you might be seeing red 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 depending on when you started investing especially if you were a new investor and you probably are looking into this video for some sort of hope and I'm here to tell you that these things happen all the time. If we just press max here on our graph we can see that you know big dips like this have happened back in November of 2021. If you're very new to investing you wouldn't have seen these dips 
but you can see one happened here, one happened here, another here, another here, and another here. It's really not a big concern if you are a long-term investor. If you are serious about generating long-term wealth, then stuff like this is gonna have to happen and you're gonna have to have the nerve to actually go through these small corrections. We don't know if the stock market is gonna crash any further or if this could be a really, really big crash like we've seen in 2020. But let me tell you this, it only took a matter of months for it to climb back up to what it was and then a lot more over that. So yeah, a £2,500 unrealized loss does seem really, really harsh. But in the long term, I personally am not worried. And if I had a lot of spare cash lying around, I know exactly what I would be doing with my money. So make sure to check out some of my other videos and I'll see you in the next video.